the diversity consulting firm White Men as Full Diversity Partners, which specializes in helping white males awaken together, which frankly sounds a little creepy. Like, I, w- I wouldn't want to awaken with a bunch of other white males. Those aren't pillows. Ah! Meanwhile, the Biden administration continues to wokeify the nation's military industrial complex. So the truth is that the government has been engaging in woke in woke priorities with regard to national defense for quite a while now. I mean, the, the GAO, the U.S. Government Accountability Office, put out a report in 2017 in which they openly talk about the fact that the Department of Defense actually obligates billions of dollars every single year to buy products and services from types of businesses. Okay, and a business, this is according to the GAO, a business generally must self-identify as a minority-owned business or a women-owned business as applicable in the federal government's contractor registry. So there's like a specific part of the budget that is basically dedicated that it has to be given to a female or minority-owned business. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about the military making missiles, for example, or making military hardware for jets, I don't care at all who owns the businesses that sell that product to the Department of Defense. I just want that stuff to work, and I want to pay the lowest price for it because it's coming at taxpayer expense. But the U.S. government for a very long time has been engaged in this sort of affirmative action program for female-owned businesses and, and black-owned businesses designed to direct money toward specific, I mean, by, by in violation of civil rights law. They, they, they picked specifically minority-owned businesses in order to direct dollars toward those businesses, even if it's a greater cost to taxpayers, even if it means that there's a delay in the procurement process because you have to actually demonstrate, apparently, that you couldn't have gotten it from a black-owned or a minority or a minority or, or female-owned business in order to actually procure certain military parts, is what I'm hearing from people inside the Defense Department. Okay, so that's been going on for quite a while. And Joe Biden was set to ramp that into high gear. According to governmentexecutive.com, this is back in 2020, the incoming Biden administration is likely to increase contracting opportunities for small and minority-owned businesses. President Biden-elect said that he wants to use equity as a guide. Andy Howard, partner in the law from Alston and Byrd's government contracts group, says, I think we're going to see more regulation generally promoting competition and furthering the socioeconomic policies of the new administration, which is different in many respects from the current administration. Apparently, this the, there was speculation early on that, that the Biden team is now effectuating that would expand the Small Business Administration's Small Business Development Program to increase participations of small disadvantaged firms require prime contractors to increase subcontracting opportunities for small disadvantaged businesses and protect small business from contract from contact bundling because that would prevent smaller firms, especially those owned by black and brown people, from effectively bidding on procurement con- contracts. Now, contract bundling is generally a good thing because that means that you have like a defense, let's say Lockheed Martin. They have a subcontractor. And now Lockheed Martin wants that subcontractor to go out and get a bunch of parts. Well, now you're going to have regulations inside the Biden administration that prevent them from doing that. Instead, they have to buy every part separately and show that every single part could not have been obtained from a black owned or female owned business before they can just go over to Walmart and pick up the part. How that helps America's military readiness is absolutely beyond me. It has nothing to do with America's military military readiness, especially in a time of rising conflict with states like China. But beyond that, we have now decided that it's very important that America's defense contractors get engaged with the new woke military priorities of the Biden administration. There's a reason the Biden administration is putting out these bizarre ads in which they're recruiting for the CIA by being like, here is a a cisgender but very tolerant Hispanic woman with generalized anxiety disorder. You too can work for the CIA. Or here is a military recruiting ad. This person had two lesbian moms. Like what in the world? Well, again, this is about wokeifying the American military and turning it from what is a quote-unquote de facto right-wing institution into something that is much more woke. Well, now this is being crammed down on America's contracting companies, things like Lockheed Martin, for example. So Christopher Rufo does excellent work on this sort of stuff. He has a piece today in City Journal. says, last year, Lockheed Martin Corporation, the nation's largest defense contractor, sent white male executives to a three-day diversity training program aimed at deconstructing their white male culture and encouraging them to atone for their white male privilege. The program, hosted on Zoom for a cohort of 13 Lockheed employees, was led by the diversity consulting firm White Men as Full Diversity Partners, which specializes in helping white males awaken together, which frankly sounds a little creepy. Like, I I wouldn't want to awaken with a bunch of other white males. It's weird. Like, I'm married. 
Yeah, the Lockheed employees, all senior leaders in the company, included Aaron Huckabee, director of global supply chain operations, retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel David Starr, director of the Hercules C-130 military transport program, retired Air Force Lieutenant General Bruce Litchfield, vice president of sustainment operations, and Glenn Woods, vice president of production for the Air Force's $1.7 trillion F-35 fighter jet program. At the beginning of the program, the diversity trainers led a free association exercise, asking the Lockheed employees to list connotations for the terms white men. The trainers wrote down old, racist, privileged, anti-women, angry, Aryan nation, KKK, founding fathers, guns, guilty, and can't jump. According to the participants, these perceptions have led to assumptions about white men and diversity, with many employees believing that white men don't care about diversity, have a classical perspective on history and colonialism, and don't want to give away our power. The White Men is Full Diversity Partners team, Jim Morris, Mark Havens, Michael Welp, framed the purpose of the training session as providing a benefit for white men who embrace the diversity and inclusion philosophy. In response to a prompt about what's in it for white men, the participants listed benefits such as, I won't get replaced by someone who is a better full diversity partner. I will improve. I will improve the brand image, reputation of white men, and I will have a less nagging sense of guilt that I am the problem. The firm's founders, Welp and Bill Proudman have argued that white males must work harder to understand their white privilege, male privilege, and heterosexual privilege, which affords them unearned benefits. This is what we are now tre- teaching people at Lockheed Martin. Now, why exactly is Lockheed Martin doing this? Why are they bothering? The reason they're doing this is because they want to be able to say to the Biden Defense Department, we have complied with all of your woke diktats. We are on the team, guys. Keep directing those trillion dollar checks over here, please. This is not the first time that white men as full diversity partners has been involved in a controversial training program. Last year, the company's white male training program for employees at Sandia National Laboratories was was performed. Consultants such as White Men as Full Diversity Partners are are peddling this sort of stuff to bloated government contractors, and the government contractors are going right along with it because, of course, they want the contract. So wokeifying America's military-industrial complex, it, it is a move. It is a shocking move. Republicans right now are warning of this. 30 House Republicans have now sent a letter to Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin warning him that creeping left-wing extremism and politicization is jeopardizing the U.S.'s military status, according to Breitbart News and Christina Wong reporting. The letter, led by Representative Matt Rosendale, a Republican in Montana, said, we write to express our concern about the growing trend of left-wing extremism and politicization of our armed forces. The military's long history of standing above politics has made it one of the most respected institutions in America. That legacy is now in jeopardy. They listed some examples of politicization, First was the Diversity and Inclusion Strategic Plan for our Special Forces. The United States Army also released a recruitment video describing marching in left-wing social protests as defending freedom and depicting two moms raising a child and featured a lesbian wedding. Lieutenant Colonel Matt Matthew Lohmeyer, commander of the 11th Space Warning Squadron at Buckley Air Force, warned of radical ideology being pushed on the military and stated, quote, the diversity, inclusion, and equity industry and the trainings we are receiving in the military is rooted in critical race theory. He was relieved of his command for this. Hey, all of this is deeply, deeply troubling stuff. And and again, remember, Joe Biden thinks the way that you compete with China is spending $6 trillion in a budget and also wokeifying the American military industrial complex. I think we are going to lose. (laughs) If this is the way that you tackle an authoritarian, aggressive power like China, good luck to you. By the way, just a quick side note on the bizarre critical race theory ideology and how stupid it is. There's this whole meme online called people posting their L's, right? People putting up tweets, describing things they've done that are really just them describing how they got their ass kicked online. Okay, so Mark Lamont Hill posted a clip of himself talking to Chris Rufo. Chris Rufo, again, doing excellent work over at City Journal, exposing critical race theory. And this really demonstrates wholesale the perversity of critical race theory thinking in which Mark Lamont Hill engages routinely. Mark Lamont Hill is just terrible. He was interviewing the, he's interviewing Chris Rufo And he says, what do you like about being white? Now, this is a trap of a question, of course, because the real answer to this is, I don't understand what my race has to do with anything. My race doesn't dictate my culture. My race does not dictate my abilities. My race does not dictate my priorities. But Mark Lamont Hill wants to trap Chris Rufo because Chris Rufo says that I'm not proud of being white. Then Mark Lamont Hill goes, well, why not? Why not? What are you guilty for? And if he says, well, here's the thing I'm proud of being white about. Then he says, ah, oh, look at you, you racist. Right, this is the trap. This is the catch-22. Chris Rufo refuses to fall for it, and Mark Lamont Hill is proud of himself for asking this dumb question. Christopher, what do you like about being white? What would you say? 
<laughs> I don't know. I, again, it's such an amorphous term. It's like a census term or a. a, but, a crude but, but can, can, can you do me a favor? Indulge term. me. In, indulge me for one. It just we're running out of time. Indulge me for a minute. I understand you see it as as all these things, but you surely recognize that the world sees you as white. You know the world reads you as white. And if you were to ask me some things I like about being black, I could talk about cultural norms, I could talk about tradition, I could talk about the kind of commonalities I feel around the diaspora. If I were to ask you what, particularly if you're saying whiteness is a thing that is being constructed as negative and shouldn't be, name, name something positive that you like about being white. Okay, and, and Chris Rufo rejects the premise, but Mark Lamont Hill can't understand why he should reject the premise. Okay, first of all, it is absolutely reductionist to say what I like about being black is all of these various characteristics that really don't have to do with race and really have more to do with culture and history, right? Like, well, that not, you can be black and, and agree with none of the things that Mark Lamont Hill just said there. But again, this racial reductionism is now being taught in America's military settings. I mean, this is, this is madness. I know what you're thinking. It's time to binge some more Ben Shapiro videos. Well, you are right. You should. But first, like and subscribe. Perfect. I'll see you in the next video.